Hi, my name is Jonathan. I am a tutor on Chug Tutors, and this lesson is on Le Chatelier's principle, which is used to describe how a system, um, meaning a chemical reaction, at equilibrium will respond if we make changes. Uh, these will be changes in concentrations, um, changes in temperature, changes in pressure. Um, so every reaction that's at equilibrium is at its most stable state. So if we start making changes to this system, it will want to counter these changes to go back to where it was. So first let's define what equilibrium is. This is when um, a reversible reaction, when the forward and reverse reaction rates are actually equal. So we can take our imaginary reaction of x plus y gives you z, and the reverse reaction is z gives you x plus y. So if we graph this of reaction rate versus time for the forward and reaction and reverse reaction, the forward reaction is given by blue. So in the beginning of the reaction, we only have x and y in our system because these are our reactants. So the reaction rate is at its highest. But over time, it'll decrease until it gets to a constant level. And same with the reverse reaction. In the beginning, it's at zero because Z is not forming X and Y because there's only X and Y in solution right, right at the beginning. So it gradually increases as more Z is formed and able to form X and Y until it reaches a constant rate. Now when these rates are equal and constant, this is when equilibrium is achieved. Okay, so we can also put this in relations of amount of product versus reactant. Now it should be noted at equilibrium, the amounts of products and reactants are not the same unless your equilibrium constant is one. So K EQ is given by, this is the equilibrium constant, products over the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. Now if KEQ is large, that means at equilibrium, the reaction sits far to the right with the products. So there's a lot more products at equilibrium than there are reactants, but the amounts stay the same at equilibrium. So for example, if at equilibrium, if there's 10 molecules of Z formed and only four molecules of X and Y, so two each, that means that in 20 minutes, if I check my reaction, we still have the same amounts. They haven't changed, but there will always be a greater amount of Z. So we can graph this and say that if red is the reactants, so their amount will gradually decrease as you start forming product, but then at equilibrium, it'll get constant like that. And the products will start from zero because we don't have products initially, but then it will gradually increase and then get constant at equilibrium. So this type of reaction here would be if the KEQ is large, meaning that the concentration of products at equilibrium are greater than that of reactants. So now let's see what happens when we start making changes when these reaction rates of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. So this reaction is the Haber process. It was used in, Germ uh, in Germany during World War I. <laughs> and it's used to take nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas to form ammonia. Right, gas there. And if we were to write the equilibrium expression, products, remember concentration of products over reactants, However, we need to raise it to the power of the coefficient. So here we raise it to two because two is in front of nitrogen, uh, ammonia, sorry. And we raise the hydrogen concentration to three because there's a three coefficient in front of hydrogen. So here's our equilibrium expression. This will be useful for Le Chatelier's principle. And we also know that the reaction is exothermic, meaning it releases heat. So we can pretend that heat is another product. So it goes right here. So let's first see what happens when we start changing concentrations of any of the species in this reaction. So let's say that we increase the amount of nitrogen gas. So this goes up. Well, now we have an excess of nitrogen gas, so the reaction 
is going to want to get rid of this to counter this to go back to equilibrium so that it's going to use up nitrogen gas by shifting to the right and forming product because this uses up the reactants so an increase in nitrogen gas will cause a shift to the right Now you can also look at this in terms of the equilibrium expression, which is K and H3 squared over N2 H2 cubed. So this is going this is a constant, it's an equilibrium constant. So if this goes up, this is a denominator. If the denominator goes up, the numerator has to go up to keep this constant. So we're forming more ammonia gas, which is actually shifting, which, which results from shifting the equation to the right. So in the same way, we can look at a decrease in hydrogen gas. If we decrease hydrogen, let me erase these arrows. If we decrease hydrogen gas, the equation, the reaction now says, I don't have enough hydrogen gas, so I need to form more of it to counter this change of decrease. So I'm going to shift to the left to make up for that decrease in hydrogen gas. So shift to the left. Now in the same way we use the equ equilibrium expression in the previous one, we can do it here too. So if we decrease this, we're decreasing the denominator, denominator, and in order to keep K constant, we need to decrease this. So we're using up products, we're using up ammonia, we're decreasing the amount of ammonia by shifting the reaction to the left and forming more reactants. Okay, so now let's look at a change in temperature. So if you remember, this is an exothermic reaction, so we can write heat as a product because heat is released given by that negative heat of enthalpy here. So if we increase the temperature we can essentially pretend that we're increasing the amount of product because heat is a product. Increase in heat, increase in temperature. So if we increase a product it's going to shift to the left to counter this change and use up that product, use up that excess amount of heat because now <clears throat> because the, the reaction was initially stable at equilibrium and then as we're adding more heat it's saying I have way too much heat to handle so it's going to start shifting to the left to get rid of this excess heat so an increase in temperature will cause a shift whoops shift to the left towards reactants So now let's look at changes in pressure. So when we think about this, I think it's best to think in terms of space. So let's first determine how many moles of gas there are on each side of the reaction. So on the reactant side, we have three moles of hydrogen gas and one mole of nitrogen gas. So that's four moles total. And on the products, we have two moles of ammonia gas. So that's two moles total. So we obviously have less moles of species on the right side of the equation in the products. So now let's imagine that we have a space and we start increasing the pressure by let's say decreasing the volume. So we start putting it in a uh, smaller and smaller space thus increasing the pressure. What is the reaction going to want to do? It could either go towards four moles or go, go towards two moles and it's going to choose to go towards a fewer number of moles because that way it has more space. The, the molecules have more space to move around. So if we increase the pressure, it's going to shift towards the right where there's only two moles. So an increase in pressure will shift the reaction towards the fewer number of moles. So this will go towards product. And in the same way, a decrease in pressure, this would be if we expanded the space, a decrease of pressure, well now the reaction says, wow, I can form 
many more molecules. So now I can shift to the left and form four moles because now there's a lot more space to move around. So this, a decrease in pressure, will result in a shift towards the left. Okay. So in summary, a change in the concentrations of any of the species in a reaction will result in equilibrium shifting in the direction to counter that change. So if I increase the concentration of reactants, it's going to counter that change by going towards the products to use up that excess amount of reactants that I just added. And an increase in temperature will result in a shift in equilibrium toward the reactants for exothermic reactions where, we can, uh, where heat is released and we can consider heat as a product, but a shift toward the products when heat is a reactant in endothermic reactions. And an increase in pressure will result in the reaction shifting to the fewer number of moles, remember, because we're closing the space on this gas. And a decrease in pressure will result in the sh reaction shifting to the greater number of moles, because we're opening that space and allowing it to form more moles. Um, so I hope this helped. And I'm Jonathan, and this is Check Tutors.